Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to return to a topic I've covered before but one that I think is ever challenging how to get good looking smooth white so let's get into it uh, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V let us get to the technique and learn it Vincey V style You know, white paint is often so challenging to work with. Resolving and getting credible white material, cloth, cloaks, whatever, on your figures can often be difficult just because of the nature of acrylic paint. White acrylic paint tends to be chalky, it tends to be thick and goopy, it tends to be hard to work with. But what I'm going to walk you through today is a different way to look at white. And the most important thing I can do is show you the image that's on the screen right now and ask you, what color is that image? And you might say gray or dark gray or something like that. But no, in fact, that's a picture of white clothing. You see, the trick with white is that you actually don't need to resolve much of the area in white to have it look like the color white to the eyes. This is one of the great ways your brain plays tricks on you. If you've ever seen a white car or when you see white shirts or even white walls in your house, most of them actually aren't white, or that is to say at least bright, cold, dead white. It's very influenced by other colors in the environment and by the shadows that are naturally created by other environmental lighting. But your brain smooths all that away and doesn't let you see any of it and just says, no, no, that's a white car, a white shirt, and a white wall. But today we're going to learn how to use those same tricks that exist in reality and resolve a smooth white paint job through the integration of both slight amounts of hue or color, as well as the right amount of white to make something read correctly and credibly while still making your paint job a lot easier. So let's head over to the painting desk. All right, I could have just started with a zenithal prime, but of course, then I wouldn't really be teaching how to paint white. So instead, it's basically a gray primer, and we're gonna put some reddish gray over the top. Why reddish gray? Well, because it has red in it. It's very warm. It's gonna make a naturalistic warm shadow. And that's the first key. When you're gonna try to make something white, white, dead white is quite cold. So by creating warm shadows, your brain more realistically believes that the parts of the miniatures that aren't actually in white are just white in natural shadow. And your brain doesn't ask any more questions and says, yep, even though only 50% of that space is white, that's a natural shadow, I'm good to go. So as I slowly build up here and integrate a little bit of faded green into it and start building it out, it's really just about achieving that smooth but warm low shadow. Now, I'm not going to actually leave much of this on the miniature in the end, but it's still important to establish. As we move on and start applying what's really our, I don't know, pro proper base coat or what's going to be most of the, the mid-tone of the model, uh, here the key is why go to green? Green is the uh, contrasting complementary color to red. And where there's green and red meet, they will create a naturally darker color. So even though this is quite intense right now, we'll smooth it out later. And when those two mix, they're going to create something that's, again, a very natural shadow. But you'll see how most of that deeper gray is getting covered. And as I continue to build that up into pure faded green, I can use that to then build out contrast, creating things like the shoulder, where there's no actual ridge there, but I can create the, the impression of it while still leaving small shadows. But the integration of that color, even though we're nowhere near white yet, is really important. Because not only does it provide me with a very bright undershade to lay my white over, but it's a lot more visually interesting than just a mid-tone gray. Now you might say to yourself, but Vince, I don't have faded green. That's not a color that I have. It doesn't matter. Any kind of close analog like this. You could use green, you could use grays or blues, um, off reds. It doesn't really matter using these things that are very, very high tinted, but still have a hue to them. A hue just means a color, something in the color wheel, really, will make your life a lot easier. And so even though I said gray and you can use it, most of the time I would recommend against a middle gray. Grays are just mixed generally by black and white or something like that. They're boring, they're uninteresting, they do nothing for the eye. 
by adding a little bit of hue. And the reason I like faded green is just because it works well with the overall composition of this piece with my other being a very desaturated red, the other elements of these rats. Uh, you can actually make that neutral color of white become a lot more visually interesting. But again, any of those like pastels or near white tints, and there's lots of these that exist in ranges, are perfectly, perfectly fine. Uh, if you don't have any of those, hey, just mix it in yourself. Take a color like green and mix, uh, you know, white or gray into it until you get something that looks a lot like this. It's just that easy, and it will make painting and resolving that white so much, so much simpler. Okay, let's get back to painting. Yeah. Now it's time to start painting pseudo white. And for that, we're going to go to our golden heavy body acrylics. And heavy body acrylics, whether golden or schmanky or anybody, really are the secret to smooth whites. Because they're so thick and so pigment dense, you can apply them rather thickly. Or even here, mixed with my faded green, they still provide for a wonderful base coat, uh, or I should say layer up to that white, because I can really build them in, smooth them out, and I don't need to do a lot of layers. Now I'm still going to do multiple layers. The key to white is, as ever, that it's going to take multiple coats, but we don't have to be doing five, six, ten layers. Instead, I can focus this, focus this up with two or three solid applications climbing up from mixes up into the pure white and really accomplish something that has a high opacity and is quite credible as white. Now we come to the real secret of this entire lesson, which is to paint white simply, not only should you integrate a color like I did here with the green in the midtone and the red gray in the shadows, but also you just shouldn't paint white. Here's what I'm saying. Just as you saw the shirt at the very beginning where so much of it was actually gray, the brain will cover for those other spaces. As long as the shadows are in the right place, you only need about 50% of the surface to be the actual color for it to credibly look like something of that color. And so here I'm only covering really the high highlight areas with white. And because the HBA can smooth out so nicely, because I can draw it out, work it, place a dab on the model, and then smooth it and feather it really, really easily. And then through, you know, the three layers or so that I do here, I can build it up rather nicely to where at the highest highlights, there is a pure white. There's something the eye recognizes as near white all around it. And then that falls away into credibly colored shadows. Meaning that when I look at this model from a distance or even up close, my brain still resolves it as being white material just with shadows on it. So when it comes to, you know, resolving your white painted space marines or white cloaks or whatever you're trying to do, I can't, in, I can't really impress upon you enough that you want to push your highest highlights up to that pure white but you don't need to get everything there. And as a point of fact, I've now taken that original reddish gray and thinned it way down into a glaze. And here then I'm gonna go ahead and draw together my shadows, reinforcing some of them, just a slight glaze over where that original green mix met that, creating that beautiful smooth transition between the edge of the faded green and the actual red infused gray which once again will just help to softly reinforce that shadow and make sure that it all looks like what would actually happen in nature. There we go. Models all finished. There's our little rat friend. Doesn't he look fun and exciting? This was a really fun model to paint overall. I hope you enjoy how uh, we walked through the white here. The rest of this was all more or less stuff that I've covered on this channel before or will be covering in the future, so stay tuned. Speaking of which, if you liked this, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions about how to resolve it on your models, feel free to drop those down below. I always answer every question that's asked. Don't forget we've got a Patreon you can join if you want to take your next step on your hobby journey. It's focused on review and feedback and has a great Discord community you can be a part of. We'd love to have you along. As always, 
I so much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.